So we have another landscape file that we want to get into Fusion 360, and I'm going to do this with the help of Blender. Uh, this is a STL file, and I'm going to import this into Blender. But the first thing I'm going to do is the default cube is already selected. I press the Shift key, select the camera with the right mouse button and the uh, one light source, press the X key and delete them. And I'm also pressing the Q key to bring up the marking menu, click more and change from perspective into orthographic. Both of those are not strictly necessary, but uh, I like to keep the outline, or in Fusion 360, I guess would be the browser, I'd like to keep that clean. So file, import and STL and then my downloads folder and there it is, there it is. So I press the N key to bring this panel up, the transformation panel, and we see it's, you know, it, it seems huge. So the first thing I need to do, I actually need to change the unit preset to millimeters because when we export this, that's what it's needed to show up properly in Fusion 360. And I need to change my clipping here to 10 meters. So I can see the rest of my, uh, of my grid here. It's still a little clip, but that's okay. Maybe we make that 20 meters. The mesh is in the file, but we can't see it. And the reason for that is it's totally off to the side. And it's also pretty, you know, pretty huge, 66 meters. Uh, that's way more than we want. So um, I'm going to click on view and view all. And there it is. Uh, only part of it is visible and it's being clipped uh, due to our settings here. I can make that bigger, but uh, we don't need that for right now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set the origin. This is a bit of a different origin than the one in Fusion 360. This origin is going to be the, the center of this object. And I'm going to set that origin to be the center of the surface. So here it is. That's where my uh, selector shows up, my triad. And the next thing I'm going to do, because this is also not at the actual scene origin, and my cursor is still at the scene origin, and we can't see that because this object is so far away from it. So shift S and I'm going to say selection to curve cursor. And if I go to view and view all again, here it is. So now it's uh, centered at the cursor, but it's still way too big. So I press the S key and uh, point zero 0.01, make this a little bit smaller. So, now we have it scaled to a more normal size and we need to get it to five feet, I guess. So this uh, dimension is 60, that's the larger dimension. So five times four feet. So we're gonna use that larger dimension, scale that to five feet and then we'll see what this comes out to. So that would be five times 12 times 2.45, five, four, uh, divided by 66.176, so that's, uh, the factor would be 2.303 that we need to scale this with. So S, 2.303, and that looks pretty reasonable. So now we have that mesh scaled, but if I hit the tab key and go into edit mode, I can see this is a triangulated mesh as STLs usually are, but it's a very regular triangulated mesh, meaning all the triangles seem to have the same size. So there is a key combination or a function in Fusion, uh, not in Fusion, in uh, Blender, where you can say um, trees to quads. Uh, I don't exactly know where that is here, but Alt-J is doing that. So almost all the triangles are gone. There's a few left. So. I change into face mode and select these. And this also not strictly strictly necessary. There are so few triangles in this file that Fusion 360 will convert that. And how do I know that? I've obviously tried this out before I made the screencast. So I don't make a total fool of myself. All right, so now this is all nice quads and uh, I select all and hit Alt J, Alt N, sorry, Control N to change the normal direction. I'll actually recalculate the normals. And that's the mesh, it's a clean mesh. 
Another thing that I often do when I work with these sorts of imported meshes, um, I go back into edit mode, select all with the A key, A once, A twice selects everything, and then the W key and remove doubles and all vertices that are within a given tolerance. It, it looks like zero, but it, it really isn't. It's, it's a minute tolerance here. All vertices that are close, that close to each other will be merged into a single vertex. Um, but that doesn't do anything here. So that's a clean mesh. So we go into object mode and then we can basically export this mesh file. Export as a .obj mesh. And my settings is I really only want the selection. And I don't have any modifiers, so I can leave that selected. I don't need the materials. And I just want to export this into an OBJ file. And we just call it that. And now we have an OBJ file. And that OBJ file we can insert into Fusion 360. There it is. It comes in, in the wrong orientation, so we have to turn it. And then I open T spline, right click on the model or in the on this T spline uh, on this mesh, convert it and convert quad mesh to T spline. That just takes a few moments and then I finish the form and I end up with a surface. And what I can do now is basically create a sketch, make a rectangle. And I'm not being overly precise here for this demo. Then I extrude this rectangle. I'm going to extrude it symmetric in this case. And then I can basically go ahead and split this body with that landscape surface I created. And hide the surface at the top. And there is our solid body. And that solid body can be perfectly fine machined in Fusion 360. And obviously, it can also be rendered in Fusion 360. So hopefully this helps.